Hey guys, and welcome back to another video, and today we're, we're going to be continuing to go over problems from week one of the June Elite Coding Challenge. Um, yeah, so yesterday um, I was actually kind of dumb, and I didn't. Re I just totally forgot that I was supposed to actually do the daily problem open the lock, but um, I just did it today, and uh, so today, yeah, we're going to be starting from maximum area of a piece of cake after horizontal vertical cuts, um, which is where uh, we left off yesterday. Um, so yeah, so for this problem, <coughs> you're given uh, two numbers which represent the height and the width of the cake. So if h is 5 and w is 4, your cake would look something like this. And you're given an, an, an array of integers, horizontal cuts and vertical cuts. And these cuts will essentially cut up the cake into smaller pieces. So um, if you have these cuts at 1, 2, and 4, these are the horizontal cuts here. Um, and vertical cuts at 1 and 3, you'll end up with like these separated out chunks of cake. And you're supposed to return the maximum, like the largest chunk of cake, basically. So in their test case, uh, after these cuts are given, this little 2x2 two two area would be the largest, and you'd output its size, which is 4. And, yeah, so the only other thing to note here is you're supposed to return the number modulo of that. So that means that we should probably uh, use long somewhere before we, like, take the mod of the number, right? And... Yeah, so I don't think that there's anything else too important to talk about, so let's move on to the solution. So if we know we're wanting to try and find the largest um, like rectangle left after these cuts, uh, what we can do is ideally if all of our cuts were sorted, so if we knew we made a cut here, cut here, and like a cut here vertically, um, and they were sorted, so like we knew we knew that um, we know that the next cut in the cuts array, uh, sorry my computer is lagging a little. So in our cuts array, if we know that our cuts will be in order, so like we won't be cutting here, then here, then here. Um, uh, if they're sorted, we can just look at this cut and look at the cut next to it and see the width of that cut. And same with the horizontal cuts. Uh, you can, if they're sorted, you can just look at adjacent cuts to figure out um, the space between there. And once you combine these, uh, the horizontal and vertical cuts or whatever, it's just a simple matter of find picking out the largest gap from the horizontal cuts and the largest gap from the vertical cuts, uh, because multiplying those would result in the largest possible area. So if we look at these vert these horizontal um, the gaps formed by these horizontal cuts, so like this gap and this gap and like this gap, sure, um, yeah, it's pretty easy to see. Like um, yeah, we can just keep track of this gap is the biggest and check the vertical gaps formed by these vertical lines, so this gap, this gap, and this gap, then at the end, we can just kind of take the two largest gaps, because combining these two largest gaps will result in the biggest area that we can have. Um, that's the largest slice of cake that is left. And, of course, this intuitively makes sense, because um, if if your cake is divided up like this, with, without any horizontal cuts, with only vertical cuts, um, let's just say we can ignore horizontal cuts for now, then obviously th this slice here will be the, the largest, because it's the widest, right? And if you ignore the vertical cuts, same logic with that. So we can just combine the logic here, and combining the vertical and horizontal cuts, just take the largest gap of these and these, 
multiply them together, and then you'll have the area of the that's the answer you want to output. And so that now that we know how the solution behind this works, let's take a look at how it's implemented. And uh, yeah, another another sign that uh, you could use to try to get onto a sorting like approach is if you notice the length of their cut arrays are at maximum 10 to the 5. So this signifies an n log n runtime uh, because uh, anything over n squared would be too slow because that's 10 to the 10 that's too long a runtime. So if you see 10 to the 5 as a like a as a, the longest an array can be for these types of problems, it usually um, there's usually an n log n intended solution for it. And so yeah, let's just get into the code. So first we get this number because we just need to mod by at the end, which is not that important. And here we can just sort these cuts. So if you notice here in the problem, these signify the position of the cut. So this signifies a position cut at position one, a cut at position two, and a cut at position four. So we can just sort these so we know that all the cuts should be adjacent to each other. Next, what we can do is we can iterate through our now sorted array of cuts to find the maximum uh, like gap between each cut. So of course the first gap, uh, because um, our width here starts at zero and then another thing like, if, yeah, it's probably easier just to look at this. So it starts at zero and then one and then two and then three, four, five like that. So the first gap will just be um, the where it starts. So the cut at one, that'll have a like a width here of one because from zero to one. And uh, so that's what we start off as because that's our first um, width. And we can just iterate through starting from the next cut. And then we look at uh, this is basically calculating the width between this cut and the cut previous to it. So these adjacent cuts, because this will be the second, second cut in the array. And this will be the first cut in the array. So then this just calculates the width between them. And we can just take the max of that and the maximum width. And at the very end, we just need one more check because the last cut is positioned at four. So the last cut will just be from four to whatever the, the height of this cake is. So height is five. Since it goes from zero to five, we know we can just do five minus four to find that this gap here is a gap of one. So that's exactly what we calculate here. So we take the height and we subtract the last number. That's the last gap. And we just continue to take the max of everything. So max width will represent the maximum like gap uh, uh, yeah, maximum gap between these horizontal cuts. Uh, now that I'm looking at it, I kind of got it backwards because um, technically the width should be the maximum gap between the vertical cuts, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, yeah, ignore this, the weird naming, but similarly, max height, um, this is just a variable. This will find the largest gap formed by these vertical cuts using the same exact logic um, we use for the horizontal cuts. And we just make sure to use a long here. It's important because multiplying these, um, if you think about it, because height and width both could be 10 to the 9, you could have an area of like 10 to the 9 squared, so that's 10 to the 18. That's far too large to fit in a regular 32-bit integer, so we just want to uh, store this in a long, and yeah, since these two are longs, we can just easily multiply them, store them in another long, and then we can just modulus our answer and cast it to an int because they want you to turn an int.
And yeah, it's as simple as that. So if we submit it here, and uh, yeah, I'll analyze the runtime now. So this is obviously an n log n um, solution, um, as we talked about earlier with this 10 to the 5, because sorting the array would just be an n log n operation. And finding these largest gaps is just a O of n operation, since we're just looping through the array once. And yeah, that's about it. So this was the solution for maximum area of a piece of cake after the cuts. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys later. Uh, see ya.